Save 10% with my code BOBBY10 on raw, organic, grass-fed and grass-finished freeze-dried organ meats from Grassland Nutrition. Link in the description box. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, today we're going to react to Islamic Guidance with their video The Cure to Arrogance. I have absolutely no idea what to expect of this video other than obviously it's going to be about the topic of arrogance. Guys, as always, I'm sharing my own personal experience with Islam and with Muslims and I have to say growing up in Germany, I really had many, many unfortunate encounters with Muslims. Most of the time there was no humility. Plenty of them were arrogant, boastful, loud-mouthed and whatnot. This was simply my experience in Germany with so-called Muslims. This is why, as I always say, when I read the Quran, finally I was shocked to see that the exact opposite of the behavior that I encountered in real life was recommended by the holy book of Islam itself. So I really hope that this video will be an eye opening watch. Let's have a look. The hadith is narrated by Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He said that a man that has even the slightest bit of arrogance in his heart, he doesn't enter paradise. Yeah, this makes absolutely perfect sense to me. So, you know, a man sitting next to the Prophet he was a little bit confused about what exactly is kibir. So he further asked the Prophet he said, O Prophet of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam A man loves for his clothes to be neat and nice and tidy And just likewise he also wishes for, to have, for him to have good shoes So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said That's not really from kibir Rather Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is beautiful and he loves beauty as well in Christian orthodoxy, this is called philakolia, the love of beauty, that God loves what is beautiful and that God creates beauty. Arrogance is when you reject the truth and you look down upon people. And you sure. don't uh, respect people in the manner that, or in the due manner that they're supposed to be respected. So, you know, this is... Absolutely, man. Everything is God's creation. Every person is God's creation. And therefore, we have to respect each other. How the Prophet wasallam. He described arrogance to be that you reject the truth. Yes, I absolutely agree with this as well. Rejecting the truth is basically one of the biggest blasphemous acts that you can practice because rejecting the truth means that you realize that it is the truth. If you reject something and you simply do not know that it is the truth, then there is no guilt on you. But if you know that it is the truth and you reject it, then you're willfully ignorant and arrogant, of course. Because when you look at yourself as you're something that you're really not, you begin to think that whatever anybody else is saying won't be the truth. Secondly, not only does that happen, rather Allah Azza wa Jal Himself, He takes the tawfiq out of you for you to be able to accept the truth. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this in the Quran, He says, What is tawfiq? Those that are arrogant in the land, I will turn them away from my signs, from my verses. As in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take away that capability from within you of accepting truth. Mm, yes, man, this makes perfect sense. And I've seen it in so many intellectuals. People that pride themselves in their intellect and being oh so smart, super analytical, super logical. Yeah, sure. Those people have the hardest time to accept truth or to even see the truth. Even if it is right in front of them, they will debate themselves out of it again. Not only does Kibir do that to you, rather Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will increase you from staying away from the truth. Now, yeah. You know, there's a lot of things. And I have to stop it again. Sorry, guys, but there's so much depth in this video. Look at this verse. Rather, Allah will increase you from staying away from the truth. And this is something that, of course, Christian apologists or anti-Islamists in general use to attack Islam. They say, oh, look at this. Allah is the deceiver. Allah is therefore the devil. But don't you understand that everything is within God's hands? Even when you read the Bible, you see very, very similar passages messages to this here. Only God can bring you into his truth or shun you forever. This is how powerful God is, of course. Away from the truth. Now, you know, there's a lot of things that can be said about Kibir, but to sum it up, 
Usually, when a person is mutakabbir, it's one of three things that happen. What is mutakabbir? Or there's one of three signs that he can, you know, look at and judge himself based on. Number one is that you start to feel that you are greater than somebody else. Yes. Now you can either feel that you're greater than somebody else in something pertinent to the dunya. Like, you know, a new camera you got, for example. Yeah, okay. you're richer. What or about? you can feel that you're greater than somebody else because of a certain trait that you have that's Islamic. Like that is really the worst and this is super hypocritical when you think that you're better than other people spiritually because you fasted more or you prayed more or whatnot. Like this, essentially, you build yourself a spiritual ego. Like, for example, you fast. The more. worst. Like, for example, you, you know, uh, have ilm or you read Quran or you, whatever it may be. Yeah, you whatever. start to feel that you have precedence over, over others because of that action. Yes. These are two aspects of one looking at himself as greater than somebody else. Now let's recap. First of all, in terms of the dunya and everything pertinent to the dunya. This reminds me of what I learned from a Christian Orthodox scholar and he said if you're fasting during Lent, during the Orthodox fast, and you're proud of yourself, how good you are at fasting, break the fast because if your fasting practice is building up your ego and you're so proud of yourself you're tapping yourself on the shoulder for doing such a good job and you're better than anybody else this is when you fell into the trap of the ego yet again you lost the battle let's recap first of all in terms of the dunya and everything pertinent to the dunya if a person looks at himself as greater than somebody else because of a little piece of dunya that he has, then this yeah. person is amongst the most miserable of people. Oh, of course. Because the Prophet wasallam, he said in a You are proud that you own something that will perish. Congratulations. Said that the dunya with everything in it, the worldly life with everything in it is cursed. And cursed is everything within the dunya. Except, you know, the Prophet ﷺ said, a person of knowledge and a person that seeks that knowledge. And then he made some exceptions, different narrations show different things. So if a person thinks he's greater than somebody else because he has more la'na than others, what kind of a miserable individual is this? Yep. And the Prophet ﷺ, he said, if the dunya was to be equivalent in the sight of Allah Azza wa Jal, even the size of a mosquito's wing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wouldn't have given even a sip of water to a non-believer. But he did give sips of waters, rather he gave them the dunya with everything in it. So for person. Sure. He thinks of himself greater than somebody else because of the little bit of dunya that he has. And this is a person that's really miserable. Yeah, because this dunya, this life is nothing in comparison to the eternal afterlife, of course. So who cares what you own? This is not what the game is about. Worthless. His mind is not working straight. If he realizes no. these realities, that the dunya, it's a whole bunch of, you know, except the goodness therein, Everything else is what? A test from Allah It's just stuff, man. And now let's come back to the deen. You can look at yourself as greater than somebody else because of some sort of uh, trait that you have that's Islamic trait. Let's take a person that's even seeking knowledge. When you walk into a meeting with people that are not going to Islamic classes, with people that don't keep a beard, with people that don't do this, don't do that, you walk into a meeting, do you look down upon him? A man without a beard, of course. Whether you like it or not. Joking, not joking, guys. Maybe I'm a little bit better than him, maybe whatever, you know, something like that comes up in the heart of a mind, right? You look to another person, if you're really, really pious, you look to another person and you wish for him to be the one that says salam to you. You wish for him to go and tell people about the good that you've done. And about the piety that you have. You know, this guy prays at night time. And we give that example of the individual he was praying salah. 
and everybody's like, subhanAllah, this guy's got so much pursuit. Yeah, yet again, this is such a minimalistic thinking, such a one-dimensional view. Nobody cares, man. When you go pray, you do it for God, and God sees your prayer, of course. Who cares if your neighbor, your friend saw that you were praying? Nobody. And all of a sudden, he turns around and says, I'm fasting as well, right? So you wish for people to, you know, express those good qualities and those good traits that you have. Now, when you look down upon other people, what happens? You have committed an act of kibr. You have been arrogant. Of course, man. And we understand the promise of the Prophet ﷺ to the individual that's arrogant, that he will end up nothing, nowhere on the Day of Judgment, except in hellfire. What do you have to be arrogant? That is absolutely beautiful. I really wish that much more Muslims would know about this, man. As I said, my experience with Muslims in Germany was so extremely negative. If they would have only known that arrogance brings you straight to hell fire, they would act, of course, completely differently. This is such a powerful statement that arrogance brings you straight into hell fire. If people only knew, they would rethink their actions. The Prophet ﷺ, he said in a hadith, whenever a person says that people have been destroyed, then this individual is the most destroyed of them all. He destroyed him at the when debate. When a person goes out and he says, you know, oh, they, you know, people do these kind of things and people, subhanAllah, you know, may Allah guide the people, may Allah guide the people, like he's not from the people, he doesn't need the guidance. He's a person of stature. He's beyond that. So the ulama, they said, look at the two people. What did both of them do? The one person that wasn't so practicing out in the open, he had a good thought about another believer based on the apparent outset. So because of that, he had a clean heart towards this individual, which is a good deed. It's called Husnul Bun. And this person did the exact opposite. In his mind, he's like, man, this guy is going to talk to me. And this happens a lot of times when people, and you guys are all, inshallah ta'ala, from good families and good people. A lot of times people, you know, non-practicing people, the one thing that they complain about is like, you know, when we go and meet practicing folks, what happens? We don't feel comfortable around them. They start talking about issues that are beyond our comprehension. That's normal. And the Prophet ﷺ or Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu used to say, talk to the people based on that which they will understand. If someone's around you, Look at his feelings and consider the fact that the guy is around you. Don't start discussing a topic that will totally go above his head. He won't understand. He might feel offended. At every single moment, you have to adapt a very, very da'i like demeanor. A person walks up to you, make sure you give him a smile in the face. Yes, man. Over here, this individual... This is so backpack. extremely important. I'm living in Thailand now. Finally, after three years, I'm back in this country and I forgot how important it is and how powerful it is. Man, this country is called the land of thousand smiles for a reason. I walk down the street and people consistently smile at me. It makes your day. So this Try it out. This so-called person in the sight of Allah, this person will be better. Why? Because this guy did a good deed. And this guy did a deed that could lead him to hell. Because he's having kibbutz against this individual. But on the open, you know, this guy looks good. He's got the beard. He's, got the, he's praying salah. She's got the hijab. Who she's cares? wearing the niqab. But that's all out in the open. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, on that day, everything that's within the heart will come out. I want to leave you off with yes. a story of uh, Malik ibn Dina. Malik ibn Dina was one of the pious predecessors at a very early early age in Islam, Malik ibn Dinar, he went to India with about 16 or 17 friends of his. They were all pious men. And because of him, a lot of Islam was actually able to spread in India. So he was sitting there one day, and a man from amongst the children of the governor walked by. And, you know, Malik ibn Dina saw that the way this guy is walking, you know, he's got some sort of kibbutz in there. Because you can tell that from the walk of an individual. So Malik ibn Dina, he saw him from a distance, he said, you know, it would have been better, it would have been more beautiful if he didn't walk in this manner. So the son of the governor looked at Malik ibn Dina and he said, 
Do you know who I am? Malik ibn Dila knew. He said, Yeah, I know exactly who you are. Brother, I even know your father. <laughs> so I know exactly who you are. He said, In the beginning of your creation, you were nothing more than a little piece of semen. <laughs> and at the, the Quran. end of your creation, after a couple of days only of your death, you will be nothing more than a smelling corpse, a dead body yep. that stinks and people don't even want to come close to it. And between that, you will have nothing in your stomach more than the feces. Who the heck do you think you are? <laughs> so when Malik ibn Dinari said this to the child of gover- the governor, he just kind of said, he was shocked. And he couldn't do anything because he realized the reality of cre- creation. And that's why the ulama, they said, a solution for kibr is to go and rem- remind yourself of the reality of your creation. That's why Ibn Qayyim... This is why I love jiu-jitsu, man. I've been practicing quite a lot lately. Thank God. My body is healthy, so I can train. It's absolutely beautiful. But it humbles you every single time. Sometimes you submit somebody and you think you're the boss. And then sometimes you get submitted and you feel like nothing yet again. It is an absolutely humbling sport. I recommend it to anybody. Allah, he said, whatever you do, however high you get, at the end of the day, you're going to come back and you're going to use the bathroom. Exactly. Alright guys, and this is it for today's video. Absolutely surprising hadith here I didn't know about that arrogance actually brings you straight to hell fire. And I would absolutely agree with that because every single time your arrogance gets triggered, your ego gets triggered and every single time your ego gets triggered, you are far away from God. You're not in communion with God. You're in your own mind. You see yourself as the greatest. You essentially see yourself as God. You think that you're greater than somebody else within creation but you are creation yourself and nobody is greater than creation other than god himself all right guys but this is it for today's video if you liked it leave the thumbs up if you haven't subscribed already guys please do so and if you want to support my work over patreon for example all the links are in the description box below thank you so much for your ongoing support guys as always may god bless you all much love and peace